Apple's joining the race to get into the electric car business. Apple is speeding up work on a project shipping its first electric car by 2019. Have iPhones in people's pockets, watches on people's wrists, and cars on the road. So joining us now to discuss Apple's reported plan for an electric car is... Apple appears to have registered three car-related domain names in 2015. Apple.car, Apple.cars, and Apple.auto were registered in December 2015. These are some designs of the Apple car. Apple has made roughly five different designs of how the futuristic autonomous Apple car would have looked. The world of technology has seen many ambitious projects that never became reality. One such project that was running for over a decade was Apple's entry into the car market. Apple has never officially announced the car project, but there is significant proof that Apple was working on an Apple car project and was hoping to start Apple car production in 2024 itself. Apple's project was named Project Titan. Despite being one of the top tech companies in the world, which has more than $150 billion in cash reserves and has the ability to hire top talent anywhere in the world, Apple's dream to enter the car market was shattered in 2024. Each year, Apple spent around $1 billion on the research and development of this project, and after spending $10 billion for a decade, Apple finally gave up on the project. Why did Apple give up the project after investing so much money? Let's find out. Apple's first car idea came from Steve Jobs himself. In the late 2000s, Steve Jobs said that Apple should have dominant technologies in all spaces in which people spend time, such as at home, at work, and on the go. After that, Apple went on to make other tech products, and Steve Jobs' interest in cars again began around 2008. Tony Fidel, who is known for helping to invent the iPod, had talks with Steve Jobs in 2008. Steve Jobs used to discuss, if we were to build a car, what would we build? What would the dashboard be? What would the seats be? How would you fuel it or power it? However, Apple didn't start working on cars in 2008, and back then it focused on making and capturing the phone market with iPhones. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? And we are calling it iPhone. Fast forward to 2014. Apple first explored entering the car market by considering acquiring Tesla in 2013 to 2014. While initial talks occurred, Apple executives ultimately decided against this route due to concerns raised about the car industry's challenges. This led Apple to internally approve Project Titan in 2014, focusing on building their own electric vehicle to compete with Tesla. After the Tesla idea was abandoned, Apple's hardware engineering team started working on building the Apple car. Initially, when the project started, Apple's goal was to make electric vehicles, which would be in competition with Tesla. In February 2015, the Wall Street Journal was the first to report that Apple was working on an electric car. The project was headed by Steve Zadesky, who was a mechanical engineer and worked on the iPod and iPhone at Apple. His initial task was to form a team of 1,000 people to work on the Apple car project. He poached many employees from various departments of Apple and other car companies. He hired engineers who had worked for NASA and developed race cars for Porsche. The hiring was so aggressive that even Elon Musk commented that Apple is a Tesla graveyard. People who couldn't get jobs at Tesla or were fired from Tesla would go and work at Apple. They were working on the car in a secret facility in Cupertino. By the end of 2015, there were many internal disagreements between Steve Zadesky and senior executives at Apple about the direction of the Project Titan. Because of this, in the beginning of 2016, Steve Zadesky left Apple, citing personal reasons. This put Apple's car project in trouble. After that, Apple assigned Bob Mansfield, who had successfully worked on and helped develop the new iPad. When Bob Mansfield was heading Project Titan, the whole objective of the project was shifted. Mansfield explained to his team members that he had examined the project and determined that Apple should move away from building an outright competitor to Tesla and instead build a self-driving autonomous car. Apple executives had imagined an electric car that could recognize its driver by fingerprints and autonomously navigate with just the press of a button. Apple's vision for Project Titan was reportedly nothing short of revolutionary. Unlike traditional automakers focusing on incremental improvements, Apple aimed for a fully autonomous electric vehicle. 
The car was nicknamed by the media, iCar. It would have been a car with a sleek design that seamlessly integrated with Apple's software ecosystem. The car would have the ability to navigate roads without human input. This focus on self-driving technology came from Apple's expertise in software and its desire to create a disruptive product that redefined mobility. But because of the change in objective from EVs to autonomous cars, many employees working on the project started leaving Apple, which led to a massive layoff from Project Titan. The remaining software engineers from the project were working on autonomous programs, vision sensors, and simulators for testing the platform in real-world environments. Apple had also hired regulatory specialists to navigate the heavily regulated auto industry. In 2017, Apple again shifted its goal for Project Titan. Instead of building a whole car, Apple was considering building only the software for autonomous cars. This software will be used in other cars by partnering with those car companies. Tim Cook said in an interview that Apple was developing autonomous systems. The statement from Tim Cook was clearly aligned with Apple's goal of making self-driving autonomous cars. When other companies saw Apple entering the automobile market, they also started working on and building electric and self-driving car technologies. These companies were also reluctant to partner with Apple as they saw Apple as a huge threat to their market share. Elon Musk's Tesla was also struggling to deliver its cars in 2017. So this time, he approached Apple and talked with Tim Cook about acquiring Tesla again. Apple considered acquiring Tesla, but Elon Musk had a condition that he would serve as the CEO of Apple. So their deal didn't materialize. In 2018, Apple rehired its former employee who was working at Tesla. Doug Field, who previously worked at Apple, then joined Tesla and came back to Apple. Apple initially intended to build the car in-house. Eventually, members of the car project realized that even designing and building the fundamental parts of a new car was not simple. Then Apple changed its plans and quickly shifted to finding a manufacturing partner to build. With this plan, Apple was going to design the cars and the manufacturing partner was going to build it for them. Same as Apple does with iPhones, where it designs them and Foxconn builds the iPhones for Apple. Apple really wanted BMW as its manufacturing partner, but BMW and Apple both wanted to own the customer experience and relationship with the customer. Apple's other favorite choice was Mercedes-Benz. The two companies held partnership talks, but they had similar disagreements over control of the experience and data. Apple also tried to partner with Nissan, BYD, a Chinese electric car manufacturer, and McLaren, but none of these manufacturers agreed to give control to Apple. Finally, Apple partnered with Volkswagen, which agreed with their conditions. They agreed to manufacture an autonomous shuttle where Volkswagen will build the frame, wheels, and chassis of the van, and Apple will build other components such as the dashboard, computer sensors, and a large electric battery. They were supposed to build this shuttle by the end of 2018, and it also seems like the Apple and Volkswagen partnership will last until they manufacture this shuttle only. In 2019, Apple acquired an autonomous vehicle startup called Drive.ai. The acquisition of Drive.ai served to strengthen Apple's Project Titan. They were looking forward to getting their engineering team, which had expertise in autonomous driving vehicles. Apple also got hands on the Drive.ai's technology. At the time of the acquisition, Drive.ai was about to shut down because they were facing lots of issues. Even though Apple was working on the project, it was still unclear whether they would be successful in entering the automobile market. In between all these doubts, Reuters reported in 2020 that Apple would be launching its autonomous car in 2024. From 2021 to 2023, there were not many updates that came out in public. All news outlets were reporting that the launch of the Apple car would be delayed until 2026. In January 2024, Apple's senior member of hardware engineering left the company to join EV manufacturer Rivian. One month later, at the end of February, Apple announced to their employees that Project Titan would be shut down. The employees from the project were reshuffled to work on developing generative AI, which will help it integrate into Apple's ecosystem. Even though Apple has stopped this project now, during this project, Apple filed almost 250 patents related to self-driving autonomous cars. Even if Apple had manufactured a car by 2024, one of the biggest challenges Apple would have faced was the price. Apple products are considered premium, and Apple charges premium prices for their products. If Apple had sold cars, 
it would have been difficult for them to offer the car for less than $100,000. The auto industry runs on a very thin margin, and there is not a huge profit margin unless the business is established. Even though Apple has deep pockets and billions of dollars in cash, they still couldn't make it in the auto business. It took 17 years for Tesla to become profitable, and since 1960, Tesla has been the only automobile company to get bigger and sell cars on a mass scale. The reason for the success of Tesla was Elon Musk's clear vision and what he wanted to achieve. However, Apple was not sure from the beginning what it wanted to make. There were goal shifts many times. When Apple asked how their car would be different from other car manufacturers, they had no answer. To make an autonomous car, you require a lot of real-life driving data to fine-tune the abilities of the AI systems in the car. Apple reportedly encountered difficulties in areas like object recognition, handling unpredictable situations, and ensuring robust safety measures. The sheer volume of data required to train self-driving algorithms and the ever-evolving nature of road conditions added further complexity. From the end of 2022 to 2023, Apple collected only 450,000 miles of data. However, its competitors, such as Waymo, had almost 5 million miles of data, and Cruise had 2.6 million miles of data. It looked impossible for Apple to launch a very safe self-driving car when they had very little driving data. These technical hurdles forced Apple to reevaluate its initial vision. Apple also thought of going back from fully autonomous to a less ambitious system similar to Tesla's autopilot version, which still requires driver attention. As of now, Apple has stopped this project. While Project Titan did not result in a mass-produced Apple car, it wasn't a complete failure. The project undoubtedly accelerated Apple's research and development in areas critical for future autonomous vehicles. Apple has developed a ton of new sensor technologies. They had some pretty specific algorithmic breakthroughs pertaining to car safety. The idea was to pitch the Apple car as the safest vehicle ever. The company reportedly continues to invest in self-driving technology, potentially paving the way for a future re-entry into the automotive space. In the future, we might see Apple Car 2.0, just as it happened with the iPad. Apple might be waiting for technological advancements or a more strategic opportunity to re-enter the automotive space.